Today we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost, known as the birthday of the church. So happy birthday. We've got a celebration afterwards out back <laughs> on the patio. Pentecost comes from a Greek word that was the celebration of a Jewish feast. It was at first known as the Feast of Weeks because seven weeks after Passover, they celebrated the first fruits of their harvest, also became as known as the Feast of the Harvest. But for Christians, it's become the closing of the Paschal season. The mission of Christ and the Holy Spirit is brought to completion in the church. We are now the mission. Us, the body of Christ, the temples of the Holy Spirit, we are the intention of God in the mission of Christ. It's no small responsibility. And we're all involved. As the Apostle Paul says, that there are many parts but one body. And that every part is necessary for the body to function the way that it is intended. <clears throat> Last week, Father Alex talked about how the Holy Spirit manifests itself, how it did in the Old Testament, primarily in priests, prophet, and kings, and then how in the New Testament, Jesus came so that we might have a new inheritance, so that we might all live out this calling to be priest, prophet, and king. And he intended for us to not do it alone, but he gave us a helper. He gave us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who comes with power, with purifying fire. Not the kind that hurts, because that wouldn't be of God, but gently coming, like a good father would send, to help to guide us, to purify us, to direct us in the ways that he has us to move. Father Alex talked last week about having kingdom dreams. Dreams that the Holy Spirit enables us to know that can be fulfilled in our life. Anybody do the homework and pray and consider their kingdom dreams? Praise God, a lot of head nodding. I started to pray about it and I thought, if I'm gonna have kingdom dreams, I want it to benefit others, and I want it to glorify God, as kingdom dreams should, right? And so I started coming up with a list, and the Holy Spirit was helping me, and I started to buy into some lies where it's like, no, that's a silly one. But then I circled back and I said, no, I'm doing the silly one. So I came up with a list of 14 kingdom dreams, and two got fulfilled this week. Praise God. That's the faithfulness of God. That's the power of the Holy Spirit alive in our lives whenever we're willing to dream. The Apostle Paul gives a three-step process in this reading today about how we can all be activated as a part of the body of Christ so that we can work together as a unit because there's no part that is lowly there is no part that is unnecessary. There is only parts that are unwilling to allow the Holy Spirit to manifest his gifts in us. I pray that the Holy Spirit comes with his consuming fire on all of us today, as he did in the previous masses this weekend, to show us the gifts that he has in store for us, to show us the way he wants to use these gifts. 
for his glory, for our benefit, for the kingdom of God. We hear the Apostle Paul say, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. These spiritual gifts are mentioned throughout scripture. They're wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, fortitude, piety, and fear of the Lord. Each the Holy Spirit wants to activate in our lives for the glory of God. Then we have the spiritual gifts. The spiritual gifts are equally as important and equally activated and manifested in our lives. They are words of knowledge, increased faith, the gift of healing, the gift of prophecy, the gift of miracles or mighty deeds, the discernment of spirits, and the gift of different types of tongues and the interpretation of tongues. Some of those may sound intimidating or overwhelming, but God wants to activate the ones in you that come natural to you. God knows you intimately. He created each and every one of you and he knows your strengths and your weaknesses. And believe me, the loving God that we have wants to utilize your strengths. It's consistent with who he is. Now I come up with an analogy kind of how God uses the church and my analogy is, is uh, like a soccer team. And in a soccer team, whenever the team's forming and you get together for the first time, you have a coach and if the coach is a good coach, you know, like me, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I got a few here that'll argue that. Um, but the coach evaluates all the players and as they start to play and have fun, not only does he evaluate their talents, but he evaluates what kind of goals they have for the season. And there's some things about soccer. Soccer is a game of movement. So every player all the time is moving. Whether the ball is moving to the right or forward or back, wherever it's moving, you see the defenders moving, you even see the goalie moving. And some coaches, you even see them getting really animated and moving. But everybody is always moving and they're always going in the same direction. And if you, play, if you talk to anybody that's played soccer for some time, they will tell you that the most important position on the field is probably one that they don't necessarily play. Because they see the importance of a good defender or a good goalie or a good attacker or a supporting midfielder. The church is similar. Any group that we're involved in has different attributes that are similar. But these groups are imperfect. These groups last for a season, not a lifetime, let alone all of eternity. These, these steps that the Apostle Paul maps out is first of all, to know your gift. He says there are different kinds of spiritual gifts but the same spirit. So how do you know your spiritual gifts? The Greek word for gift is charisma. What is your charism? This can be revealed to you through prayer through spending time with the Holy Spirit, he will faithfully show you your charism. And it's most likely something that you're already operating in. If you have the, the gift of piety, you're probably a prayerful person. If you have the gift of, of teaching, of understanding, 
you're probably already teaching. The next step, the Apostle Paul says, there are different forms of service, but the same Lord. The Greek term for service that he uses is diakona. Diakona is putting yourself in ministry, in service. We realize our gifts through the power of the Holy Spirit, and then if we have willing hearts, if we're open, if we acknowledge the part of the body of Christ that we are, then we willingly step into our diakona, our ministry role. The third step is there are different workings, but the same God. This workings is the fruit, is the effect that we have. The, ter- the Greek term for works is energima, from which we find the word energy, or movement, or activity. The Holy Spirit is always moving. And therefore, as church, we are too called to be always moving. Now I know I sat in the pews for many, many years before I was open and willing to the calling that God had on my life. Many of those years, Nothing broke through the walls to even encourage me to listen, much less realize the gifts that I was given. If you can't start at square one, how can you move on to ministry? You end up moving on ineffectively and not in the right place that God's calling you to. Father Alex said that about 30% of our church is active in the different ministries that we have. And like a good coach, I wanna say, praise God. Because that is by far beyond the average. The average church, only 10% of the people do 90% of the work. So we're like three times above average but I know that we're capable of more. So I wanna pray this morning and take this time for us each to listen to the Holy Spirit, to allow him to enlighten our minds, to activate our souls, to be of service to one another, to be able to express the love of God to one another, to live out our calling as body, to truly be the temples of the Holy Spirit we are called to be. I wanna invite each of you to get into a prayer posture, whether it be eyes shut, hands lifted, however you feel comfortable. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Holy Spirit, breathe on us. Illuminate our minds to the gifts you have in store for us. The gifts that you want to activate in us.
Help us to pray for one another and encourage each other. Help us to be so bold as to point out each other's gifts for your glory. Lord, pour out your gift of wisdom. Pour out your gift of understanding. Pour out your gift of counsel. Stir in our hearts so that we can be used by you. Pour out your gift of fortitude to strengthen us. Well up this spirit of fortitude within us, Lord, so that we have a holy boldness. Pour out your gift of piety so that we can be intercessors for one another, always coming to you. Pour out your spirit in the gift of the fear of the Lord, awe and respect of you. Pour out your supernatural spiritual gifts as well, that of prophecy and healing and tongues, miracles, discernment of spirits, and an increase of faith. Give us the courage to share those with one another and with the world at large. Lord, help us to discern when it's time to move on from a ministry that has grown stale, that has grown too comfortable for us. Give us the courage to be stretched. Activate us, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would show us visions of the ministries that you're calling us to. Pictures of us, pictures of those we've seen in our lives do these ministries so that we can recognize your calling to them. Lord, well up in us the fervor of your love. Praise you, Holy Spirit, for your acting in our hearts and minds. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.